The Western Indian state of Gujarat is a major producer, processor and exporter of marine fisheries in India, especially dried fish. At the same time, fish consumption in the state is the lowest among all marine states. The state accounts for about 89% of all unsalted and about 69% of salted smoked dried fish produced in India. Through the Dried Fish Matters project, we intend to bring to policy focus the social and economic significance of the dried fish sector by highlighting the production and labor relations, especially of uh, you know, women and migrant workers, market challenges arising from the industrialized fish processing uh, units, processing quality related issues, and above all, the impact of the industry and infrastructure centric development paradigm the state of Gujarat has been pursuing vigorously over these years. Another critical concern is the impact of climate change, which is really impacting very significantly the fisheries sector in general and the dried fish sector in particular. As I speak now, a major fish drying cluster in Gujarat is trying to cope with the complete destruction of its livelihoods when Tokte, the deadly cyclone, struck the state last week. This cluster is famous for harvesting and drying Bombay duck, the famed fish of the western coast, not only a food delicacy, but a metaphor for cultural identity too. And the cluster is in complete ruins now. The fishers and thousands of workers and businesses that depend on uh, you know, Bombay duck need substantial support from the state and other agencies to rebuild their lives and livelihoods. It's hence our immediate goal to contribute to the ongoing efforts to help the fisher communities to regain what they have lost in the strike of the cyclone. Hi everyone, myself Roktima and Jinia. Together we will be taking you to a brief presentation on dried fish research in West Bengal. Why dried fish matters in coastal West Bengal? Fish and dried fish as an emblem of historical and cultural integrity. Fish forms one of the major diets for Bengalis, and it is also considered holy in various religious practices and ceremony. Also, it bears the signature of cultural togetherness of United Bengal. Dried fish as a security to food and nutrition. It is a source of low cost dietary proteins for both the coastal inhabitants as well as the persons living in the hilly areas. Dried fish as a means of subsistence. Millions of people are engaged uh, as fishermen and fish workers in the dried fish production sector. Uh, also, there are fish vendors, uh, people associated to the transport network activities, as well as the local shop owners are linked to the dried fish production hubs in both Sundarban and Medinipur coastal areas. Dried fish as an earning source for women. Many women are engaged in fish sorting, salting, and drying processes under the tropical uh, sun alongside their household activities. Moreover, in Medinipur, there are few cooperatives which are entirely run by women. Dried fish as a market for local, national, and international consumption. It is linked to the international markets like China, uh, Japan, Nepal, Bangladesh, uh, Sri Lanka, and Myanmar. Also, uh, it sends dried fish to the southern and western uh, coastal areas of India. And thus, it contributes to the uh, national economy. By facilitating the foreign exchanges, dried fish uh, contributes largely to the national uh, economy of India. Over to you, Jinya. So what are we hoping to achieve uh, with our research? So we're actually applying the 4T mechanism in this particular project and beyond. So we are taking the transdisciplinary route and our uh, expertise, expertise and experience in particle ecology, environmental humanities, uh, complemented with resilience and socio-ecological system scholarship is actually enabling us to uh, inform, uh, enrich, and also transform uh, social economy into stacked social economy uh, when we are actually mapping the different theoretical uh, nodes of convergence. Uh, uh, as all of us know that uh, the literature uh, on dry fish in West Bengal is very, very scarce. So uh, triangulation, uh, I think, is the only method through which we are being able to validate and cross-validate uh, the information that we are gathering from multiple sources, uh, uh, deploying multimodal uh, qualitative research methods and methodologies. Uh, what I feel is that uh, trans-sectorality, that is the 
third T in this fourth T mechanism is the most crucial one because uh, we feel that we are actually committed to uh, co get co-involved and co-engaged with multiple stakeholders and actors uh, in the capacity of full partners in this uh, particular research venture because uh, we feel that you know through reciprocal learning knowing and doing we will be able to enhance not only you know not only enhance co-production of knowledge but also co-recommendation and co-design of more just policy frameworks and finally you know the fourth t, fourth t is trans locality so we are quite uh, inspired by political ecologists um, uh, and urban scholars uh, like uh, Arnston and Solly uh, and also Lepowski and Colony who talk about you know uh, this simultaneous grounding and walling approaches and also uh, multi-sited uh, studies uh, along with site multiple along with the site multiple approach so where uh, the researchers not only you know kind of uh, study a particular phenomena in multiple sites but they also trace a particular phenomena uh, which exist in the different places and are enacted through uh, practices that are like scattered diffused often unevenly across space so what we feel is that trans locality is a very significant and a strong enabler you know so far as this west bengal dry fish uh, research um, uh, is involved because it is giving us the opportunity to uh, link and dealing commonalities and differences in other uh, research sites within the larger rubric and context of global socio-ecological drivers and dynamics of change and you know their local repercussions. Thank you. Globally, about 12% of fish harvests are processed as dried fish, particularly in Asia and Africa. Dried fish support people's well-being in diverse ways. About half of the workforce in dried fish are women. Yet, women are rarely involved in decision-making. As a result, the challenges they face remain overlooked. My research asks the question, how women's participation in decision-making can be improved towards supporting well-being. I will develop case studies based on coastal communities in Sri Lanka. Findings of my research will help us better understand the challenges that undermine the well-being of women. Find out ways to include them in decision making and inform fisheries policies towards improving gender equity. Hello everyone, I'm Mustafa Hussain from Dry Fish Bangladesh team and I'm going to talk on dry fish in Bangladesh for a couple of minutes. Bangladesh is blessed with vast fishery resources, both inland and marine. From the perspective of natural gift, fishery resources have long been playing an important role in the food, nutrition, culture, and lifestyle of Bangladesh people. Sun drying of fish has been an age-old practice in Bangladesh. This practice is usually common in the coastal areas and inland depressions like Howard and Bill, where chilling and freezing facilities are mostly lacking. Bulk of the marine fishes caught in the Cox's Bazar coast, Sonadia, Mohiskali, Tekna, St. Martin Island, Opsor Islands of Borisal and Putuakali Belt, and Dubla Chor are dried mainly for human consumption and to make fish meal. Drying up inland fish is concentrated in Greater Maimensing, Silet, and Kumilla and several northern districts of Bangladesh. It is estimated that a significant part of the total marine catch are dried around the year with the substantial production during October to April. It is assumed that in 2018 and 19, about 70,000 dried fish are produced in Bangladesh, 82% from marine sources and 18 from inland sources. The dried products are high in demand in Bangladesh and millions of people are fond of dried fish, which is eaten regularly and are also exported to overseas markets, particularly among the non-resident Bangladeshi diaspora. Dried fish in several regions of the country are eaten more frequently than any other type of fish and are very important from the nutrition and food point of view. 
though a very important source of low cost dietary protein diet fish in the country has been in almost invisible part there are concerns about the long term sustainability of the diet fish sector due to poor infrastructure facilities lack of hygiene money and credit facilities poor institutional support and inadequate extension services through the research under current dfm project we hope to unearth a number of rather untouched subsector within diet fish sector and to develop policy guidelines with the help of some intervention measures thank you very much thank you. The Dried Fish Matters Project in Cambodia conducted its research in Cambodia in the years 2019 and 2020. As part of this research, we visited some of the main production sites in Cambodia. And as you can see in this picture, this is actually a fish being dried on top of a, a floating house on the Great Lake of Tonnesap. We could see many such drying activities or processing activities taking place on these floating villages uh, the products range from fish being smoked fermented um, and also preparing fish sauce we also visited some of the coastal regions of cambodia to capture experiences and practices of fish processing that was taking place using species or uh, products uh, from the sea we could see a diverse range of group a diverse range of people engaged in fish processing and in cambodia for example as you can see in the picture on the top left corner we saw many women engaged in the different segments of the processing value chain we could also observe young girls supporting their mothers their grandmothers and their aunts in processing the, these products close to their houses but also selling these products in the markets close by to their houses on the floating villages we could see some of the people who had their origins in vietnam engaging in both fish processing and fish capture and when we get, went to the coastal regions we could see some of the muslim or charm communities again engage in fish processing and fish capture the products that are dried uh, in cambodia take was diversity for example we could uh, see a uh, fish sauce uh, being made and also uh, there were at least two types of fermented fish products uh, and often they were sold with mixed with other products such as raw papo there were at least three or four types of dried fish so there was sun dried fish then there was a uh, um, dried a fish that had a saltier taste or a sweeter taste because they were glazed with uh, palm sugar uh, the products that were sourced from the marine um, sector were more the uh, like dried squid or dried shrimp as you can see in this picture um, fish paste or what is called prahok in khmer is also a very important um, accompaniment for um, the cambodian meal Uh, both as in terms of uh, providing nutrition but also as a, a symbol of the food culture in Cambodia Yeah, yeah, yeah.
Yeah.